Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with some more dev responses, this time with Mark Abent, lead gameplay programmer at Cloud Imperium, talking about radar and scanning mechanics, as well as Chad McKinney, again taking some follow-up questions on the Quanta system and orbiting planets. There were various questions regarding radar and scanning, asking what's the difference between the two and how does it all work, with Mark Abent answering. We are making lots of behind the scenes changes to radar, ping and scanning, so I can help clarify the terminology for the immediate future. The radar is responsible for passively finding and tracking contacts just by being turned on. Ping will actively find additional contacts or highlight volumes of space to investigate weak signatures. Scanning is used to obtain information about a specific entity. Scan requires a contact to be on the radar before it can unlock information about it. The scanner will have the ability to perform an active detection on the contact, so it will appear on the radar as you scan it. Passive detection is signature detection by just having the radar on. Active detection is signature detection requiring the player to perform an action like ping or scan. You can see further contacts out, but that allows contacts to see you out um, further as well. So capital ships have stronger radars, so their passive detection can see things much further out than a smaller ship could, but it really depends on how strong the ship's radar and ping is. To be stealthy, a player can use the following. Be within the vicinity of a larger ship or entity or ship entity emitting a stronger signal to mask your own. Turn down your emissions enough to be hidden by ambient signatures, including nearby emissions of stronger ships or asteroid fields or gas clouds. You can still be found with a ping though. The person doing the ping would light up like a bulb, so you would know the hunt is on. We are also working on a UA display to show your emissions versus the ambient emissions. This will help gauge how stealthy you're being. There was a follow-up question asking about dedicated scanner stations and suites, and are these items separate? Radar and ping are going to combine into a single item, but the scanner will remain a separate item. The next batch of updates would more or less provide these type of scanner with a longer range of retrieving information. Scanners unlock information based on the signature resolution, fall off, ambient modifiers, etc. So if you have a poor scanner, then you might have to really, really get close to unlock all of the important information compared to a better scanner that allows you to unlock the same information further out. Further updates to the exploration scanners will come thereafter as we need to handle jump point discoveries and other points of interest. I just want to say that for me, this is what exploration is going to be about. It sounds like they're, they're going to do exploration in a, in a similar way to EVE um, or at least the way Eve did it, where you'll be scanning down points of interest, where you'll then be able to go, oh, I, f I found something interesting over here. What is over here? Oh, it's uh, a pirate base, or oh, it's uh, some form of salvage, uh, or it's uh, some form of mission or exploration area, or asteroid field, or whatever. Uh, and that, to me, is uh, what I'm really, really interested in. The, the ability to find interesting jump points, or, or other odd or, uh, anomalies or points of interest or whatever, that's what exploration is about to me. Um, it might be different for different people's points of view, but I suspect that this is going to be one of the major parts of exploration. I'm yeah, very excited about that when it eventually comes. Someone asked Mark Abent as well, seriously, as a non-programmer, but nevertheless interested in Star Citizen, what is rubber ducking and rubber duck debugging? So I, I did sort of explain this in the last video, but uh, Mark Abent actually explains it in his own terms. It's so easy to get stuck in the cycle of thoughts or become stuck on how to sort out a set of problems. Problems. Talking to a co-worker or another problem might bring up new ideas as you explain the problem to another person. The trick is to just get you to explain your problem out in the world rather than just in your head, so it can spark new ideas or other creative solutions. Oddly enough, just the thought of explaining it to someone else is sometimes enough to trigger an idea or thought that you never had before. Further, using an inanimate object like a rubber duck has the same effect. I had, now they are home with me, a few rubber duckies at my desk that I would share to other co-workers whenever they get stuck. It's amazing how effective the technique is. I would also walk around the office talking to the rubber ducky as I get coffee. He also said, I love my rubber duckies. They've helped me solve so many bugs. We also had some follow-up questions with Chad McKinney. Uh, what will we see when we have the Quanta system or the Dynamic Universe simulation fully enabled? There won't be a full visualization or availability of everything Quanta is simulating available to players, though we definitely are wanting to open up certain parts of this. The thing to consider is that it 
both breaks immersion if we expose everything. How is it that you know all the movement and behavior of the entire universe? And also it breaks gameplay related to data and exploration. So while we want to try and help others understand the relationships between the underlying simulation and the side effects that result, we don't just want to hand you the raw quantum feed, which I think, to be honest, is fair enough. Um, I like to know how it works um, and they can show us examples of it. And obviously some of that data will be exposed and we'll have to actually probably um, potentially sort of like backwards engineer how the quantum simulation is working and run it into economy models and things like that in the future, which I am very interested in, um, but I am a nerd. There was another follow-up question to Orbiting Planets um, from the last dev response video uh, again, and there was a lot of comments that people made about the difficulty or lack thereof of traveling to moving planets um, with Chad responding. Everyone is bike shedding way too much on the navigation issue. I don't know what bike shedding is. Is is that hanging around and talking about something that doesn't need to be talked about like you would behind the bike sheds or, or something like that? I, I, that I, I don't... Please tell me in the comments what bike shedding is, um, or if it's a typo, or if it's a thing and I just don't know what it is. Everyone is bike shedding way too much on the navigation issue. One, I've already said we have a solution to the navigation issues. Also, people are not really understanding the full problem, which is much more complicated than you realize, considering routes with many intermediate jumps. Two, I said it was one example, not the only problem. There are many other bugs that crop up when orbits are enabled. And three, the bugs are solvable. We just have prioritized other work. So uh, eventually we look to be getting uh, planets and moons orbiting in the game. And um, that's obviously going to uh, be very interesting, very cool and much more realistic. And they've sort of said that they have the ability to sort of turn it on in game now if they wanted, but it wouldn't be ready properly. It caused loads of problems. They, there's a load of stuff that they need to solve. But that was it for today's dev response. I hope you found that enjoyable. Please, if you've got any questions, ask them in the comments below. We do have a monthly giveaway each month for October. All you've got to do is comment on any of uh, our videos that we make during October to be in for a chance of winning a Mercury Star Runner. And if you want to further support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon or use the YouTube join button down below to become a more powerful channel member than you could, actually you could probably imagine. You could probably imagine it. What are you shilling for today? I hear you ask. It's the Ridge Wallet. If you want a wallet, consider one. Because I needed a wallet, and I wanted to get their forged carbon one. Ooh, it's not haunted. I also like to shill for things and get sponsorships for things I want so I can get them for free. It's an extremely streamlined, durable wallet. And for me, that's key because I hate carrying around anything that I don't need to carry around and I don't want things to break. It has the option of a money clip or strap if you're still carrying money around in 2020. Pfft. But it can carry up to like 12 cards and there are a load of cool designs and colors. It's RFID blocking as well. There's a 45 day test drive period and a lifetime warranty as well. The best thing about them is they are not concept or alpha or anything. They are live released wallets, which you can purchase today. Use the code board gamer or the links below to get 10% off as well as free shipping and returns.